it's everything at the border uh, from the reds uh, about three kilometers. Is the light okay? Do you want to have more light? Or? The, that's self-directing the atomic the light. Okay. You can also have light from all of these. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> devices. So how did how did you get to the to, to this film to to the um, the third money the the third money? I wanted to do something that's about Vienna. Yeah, yeah I like yeah. I like whenever I go somewhere to do work about the places what they call it, site specific. Okay, yeah, yeah. and. Um, I was looking around the internet, what are some of the most, if there are many films that were filmed yeah. in Vienna. Yeah. And I called my friend Matthias and he says the most famous one is, is uh, The Third Man. And I know this film very well. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. So I started playing with The Third Man yeah. to see what I could come up with. I liked it more than most of the other yeah. films. Um, so I decided to just concentrate on this film. Mm -hmm. And then I had this idea of, um, with the images that I was making from this film, were very nightmarish. Uh, it was like a bad, bad dream, a bad nightmare. And I had this idea that Holly Martin really is the star of the film. It's not, it's not Harry Lyme. Harry Lyme is the famous actor. He's, it was. Uh, um, Orson Welles, of course, and the film was famous because people thought Orson Welles was directing it, and he wasn't directing it, he was just playing a part. In fact, Orson Welles didn't even want to be in the, in the catacombs of Vienna. He didn't go in, they had another man play the part, because he was such a, so, such a snob in a way, so yeah. I like to say, I will not go into this. Next, even the, the, the character of, uh Holly Martin, he, he has very much to do with, with your situation here because uh, Holly Martin also is an American. Yeah. And uh, he also is just uh, uh, he sure. was invited <laughs> on a short trip uh, to Vienna. To Vienna yeah. So, but um, I hope your experiences here are not so so uh, frightening. No, no, they're fantastic. <laughs> so there's there's different ways to look at this film besides just a, a story about penicillin and. Mm -hmm. There's also this, this act that this American guy comes and looks at his friend and his friend is behaving in a way that he's utilizing war as a way to make money. Mm -hmm. And there's a conscience, there's a guilt feeling. It's like, is this really my friend? What? And he ends up killing his own friend at the end. So there's yeah. this, uh, but he also falls in love with his friend's girlfriend. You know, so there's all this, this really strange relationships happening in this film. It's a great little story. And I think the way it was filmed uh, by Carol Reed, the director, is that he also used these weird angles. The yeah, from, from, uh, yeah, from the from the stomach, uh, stomach camera. Yeah, from below, and yeah. also the angles. And, and one of his friends, who was a German filmmaker from Hollywood, I can't remember who it was. I think uh, I think Willie. I can't remember who it was. But he sent him, you know, this level, yeah. this this spirit level that has a liquid inside, so you put it to see where yeah, 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 yeah. he sent yeah. this to him says, please, next time you make a movie, use this. Okay. Um, the, the, the works that you distilled from the, from the images or from the, from the uh, uplife, uh, from the um, scenes, yeah? um, in this film, do they differ from, from, uh, from, uh, from, uh, from distillations from other films? I mean, of course, yeah. It's, it has to do with camera movement. Yeah. Um, the, some directors like Fellini, the camera was always moving. Or of uh -huh. course, uh, Godard, I think, yeah. is less movement. But some film directors, the camera was If that's the case, yeah. the, the, what you call the distillations or the, the images that come out of this are not very legible. There's too much, too many abstract lines. You don't see anything. But if there's yeah. moments where an actor is not moving yeah. or if the scene is not moving and yeah. actors are yeah. moving inside, you will see some, some things that you recognize. Yeah. So I made, there's more than 1,500 scans. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
And from those, I selected about 100 that, that worked in this idea of a nightmare. And the images were every two seconds. Like, um, this is two seconds later. This is two seconds after that one. This is two seconds after that one. You can see a little bit of the okay. movement. Yeah, the I am. Yeah, okay. okay. So again, it's random. A lot of the work I do is very includes random in it. I always like to have an element mm -hmm. that is part of the process, which I do not control. Mm -hmm. I control many things, but I allow something to, 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 to work on its own. So I do all these, and then from these, then I choose the images that really work. Yeah, so... Okay. That really worked for me at the time, but sometimes... And that's why I don't delete anything, because after working on 100 images that I like, yeah. I go back to the originals, I go, oh, this one is really good, and I didn't see it before, because yeah. there's a learning process. When so I'm working with these images... So you can control the, 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 the process, but, but, but in, uh, in, in, a, in, in no way the, the result. Right. See, like, for example, this image, I didn't see it before, as well as I'm seeing it now, because yeah. after having worked on so many of the images, you start seeing the possibilities of what, how you can do this as an artist to make it even more... I mean, this is good enough as it is. Here you can see that... The sequence, the, the camera, camera shot, shots. Yeah. And, oh yeah. Uh -huh. and you can see this shot here, yeah. The, the building, the inside of the building is still is the same the here. Same. Oh, yeah. Here. yeah. So this person moved inside, inside the sequence. I mean, this in itself is an interesting other kind of project to work with eventually. There's one very important scene in the film which has a cat in it, and the cat is yeah. walking. And I have not been able to see the cat in 5,000 pictures. I don't, I don't know where the cat is. I uh -huh. haven't seen it. So, I, This one, I might specifically go and then do a series um, with the cat. I mean, already this is falling apart, but then it's, it adds to this nightmare. And I mean, do we really remember our dreams exactly how we have them? I don't know. I, I have, when I wake up, I have impressions of my dreams. Yeah, yeah. I don't really know exactly the image. And not even the story. Or, or just, you know. Because a long time ago, I was really fascinated with dreams. I thought dreams were so complicated that it's impossible for a human being to be sleeping and while sleeping to create so many new characters, characters who have personalities, who also have a history. And these characters, there's complicated stories that they are interacting with each other. Yeah. So I always felt the dream was not created in the mind, but when you're sleeping, you have this ability to go to a parallel universe. And then yeah. you start seeing yourself in this other parallel universe. Like, not yourself, but somebody who's exactly like you. I made this other work that's all about this. It's all self-portraits that were sent to me by parallel Lucians from all over the, the cosmos. I have thousands of them. Because one of these, Lucien, he determined, he knew how to transmit pictures from one galaxy to another galaxy. Okay. And he was able to get all the Luciens together and they all took a self-portrait and they sent their pictures to me, to each other. So I have this collection of like 10,000 no. different Luciens from all over the universe, the cosmos. Uh, I don't think I have them with me here. Okay. But, uh, yeah. I love the way that photography you can use it to, to connect with the world. There's so much conceptual photography today that does not connect with the world. It's, it's about the concept, but it's not about photography. I'm much more a believer in, in photography as being uh, using it, this tool called a camera to connect with the world and understand and analyze the world. A lot of artists are using photography. They like, for example, let's take Cindy Sherman. She's not really a photographer. She uses photography to document a transformation of a person. That's not photography for me. And yet all the museums show her as a photographer. I mean, this is, she's a technician. She uses a camera to document something else. It's more of a documentary than photography. Photography is really something that you take out with you to experience the world. 
So, but working with scanners is a, for me a kind of a meta photo photography. Yeah. Well, it's the scanner right now is, is because I have taken so many pictures of my life and I'm getting a little bit older, so I don't have this ability to go out as much as I want. I mean, a lot of my photography that I did was nightclub photography. Mm -hmm. But because of my ears hurt, of tinnitus, because I'm getting older, because I don't like the music they're playing now, I yeah. don't like the people being drunk all the time around me, younger people. I don't go out as much. Yeah. So my photography, I'm moving it more towards exploring things that I don't have to go out that much anymore. It's simply because of my age and the way I'm changing. Okay. It's not as easy. I cannot yeah. go walk for six hours every day photographing in the cities. I can, but I have some problem with my foot right now and I cannot do that. So I'm turning in towards working more with my archive, making books, and working more with, uh, because also when I have fun, other than just working with my own books, I'm learning more about me by doing something else with other media, with scanning, with films, yeah. with other people's work.